came at me a bit strong this morning and just told him to have mate he's in Mexico on a honeymoon I told him to, I had to, told him to say listen mate have a large bottle of water a couple of paracetamol sleep it off have a taco and chill out Pro boxing fans here in Sheffield with none other than Sam Jones um, Sam interesting morning today I would pop on Twitter and see a back and forth from you and Josh Taylor. Just, just talk to me about this. Just talk to me about what's going on here. Um, I, I don't really know, to be honest, mate. I just woke up and I saw a notification that um, Josh had done some laughing face under a post that did two months ago. And I just, like, quote tweeted it. It said, it's a bit weird to, like, comment that after, like, so long. And then he just, like, exploded at me. So I was just, like, a bit weird. But, well, 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 this is what it is, isn't it? It's on his honeymoon. To be fair though, you are very respectful throughout the I whole experience. I am respectful to Josh Taylor. He's an undisputed mate. Josh Taylor, I, I, I don't think, like, I know you're laughing. I respect Josh Taylor as a, as a fighter. He's had a, like, I'd say he's had a Hall of Fame career. Unbelievable mate. He's an undisputed champion. What a, what a fighter, by the way. He just got filled in by Jack Cattrall. Jack Cattrall didn't get the decision. He wasn't, he wasn't, I don't believe he handled it correctly, which is the reason why the, the public turned on him a little bit. And then he lost to to, Ta to Tiafimo Lopez. That was just my opinion, mate. But it doesn't mean he's a he's a bad fighter. He's had a bad career. I respect Josh Taylor. G genuinely, I know you're laughing, but I legitimately, hand on my heart, respect him. I think he's a fantastic fighter. And I'm very... I I've said it before. I'm sad that he gets judged on his last like couple of fights because before that, he was he was sensational, wasn't he? But as I said, I think Jack, Jack just battered him and then he just kind of... He's gone gone like that since. But it is what it is, mate. Like, if he doesn't like me, he doesn't like me. He doesn't have to like me. I'm a nobody to him. But he came at me a bit strong this morning and just told him to have... Mate, he's in Mexico on a honeymoon. I told him to, mate, I had to, told him to say, listen, mate, have a large bottle of water, a couple of paracetamol, sleep it off, have a taco and chill out. The only reason I'm laughing is some of the comments that he said towards you. Yeah, they made me laugh like, yeah, yeah. like the knock of Eddie Warren. Yeah, but I've already heard this before. Yeah, he called, he called me Eddie Earn on Wish. I've heard this so many times. You know, on this interview... Yeah. If this wouldn't have happened, somebody will comment saying Eddie Earnoff wish. Like I've heard it too many times before, so I thought the patter was a little bit poor. Um, I just think he needs to calm down a little bit. I understand it though with Josh. I, I, I understand why he's angry because I don't think he's been promoted very well throughout his career. I think that Josh should have been a bigger star than what he actually was, especially in Scotland. And like it's quite insane that he's not had a fight in Edinburgh, where he's from. Do you know what I mean? Where he's in the Hibernian sex. I know he's a Hibs fan. It would have, it, he should have had that by now. So he's probably just woke up you know, or didn't wake up or so I don't know. Sounds to me like he's had a few tequilas. Um, and he's thought, fuck, I've not been promoted very well. Everyone thinks I got filled in by Jack. I got filled in by Lopez and he's just mad and he just wants to have a go at a fat man like me. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, it was interesting. I woke up and uh, got, to see, got to see a funny exchange. Uh, but like you said, Josh Taylor, great fighter, well respected. And we hope to see him back in the ring soon. Yeah. When I mean soon, uh, I know Jack Cattrall is your client and obviously there's a lot of talk about that rematch happening at some point. Does this push it forward anymore with his loss against Teofimo Lopez? I don't know, really know what it does for Jack. I don't think Jack, he's not got a belt anymore. The whole reason why Jack wanted to fight Josh Taylor was to get a belt. But listen, some fights are bigger than belts and I think that everyone would want to see that fight. But we'll see because it's on Jack's terms, if I'm perfectly honest with you. It's not Jack. Jack doesn't... Josh Taylor's got nothing for Jack anymore. So we'll see. I mean, if, if it's a fight that the public want to see and it's a fight that... I don't know, matchroom want to make, then we're, we're, we're open for discussion. But ultimately, Jack wants to fight Regis Progre for the WBC world title, and that's the fight we're pushing for. So let's see what happens, mate. But no, we're not closing any door. I just think that it's on Jack's terms now, that fight, with uh, if, if the Taylor fight ever happens again. What's the latest with the Progre file? I've just had this chat with Frank Smith there. Looks the one we're pushing for. I know they... Uh, um, the Devin Haney fights there for Regis Progre as well, so we'll see how it we'll see how it pans out. We'll see how it pans out, but that, again, that's the fight we've made very abundantly clear. That's the fight we want next. Talk to me about a few of your other clients. Yeah. I know you've signed some uh, interesting young, great fighters and amateurs, but just just talk to me about them. So yeah, we've got Owen Reese. Uh, Owen Reese is fighting uh, next week, July the fifteenth. Was it next week? Or the week after? I don't know where. I'm yeah, July the 15th, uh, Owen Reese is making his professional debut. Um, I've signed Cameron Vong, 
senior elites, oh, he's an unbelievable talent. So he's going to fight, hopefully, his debut in September. I've got Daniel Toward, whose promotional deal is going to be announced in the next few days. He's going to make his debut, I'd say, in September as well. Um, yeah, I've got, some, I've got Muhammad Ali. He's fighting in August, hopefully, I think, on the Birmingham show. Mark Dickinson, he's going to be, uh, he's fight, some fight news announced very soon for him. Yeah, uh, should, be, uh, should be very good. I've got Georgia O'Connor. She's fighting on the Falls Park on the in August the fourth, I think it is. Yeah, I think if I've missed someone, I'll be I'll be uh, I'll be upset. Khalil Majid. So I've got Khalil Majid. He's uh, he was meant to be fighting end of July, but I think it potentially may change now. So yeah, it's uh, going to be going to be good, man. Busy, so it's all good. Do you want to talk about your old pal, uh, George Joyce? Uh, Gilles Zhang being formally announced yesterday, the rematch. Just talk to me about that. A lot of people saying, look, he needs to make certain adjustments in that fight, move yeah, his head move a bit more. Head. Yeah, move his head. Yeah. The question is, someone this late in his career, someone who's been in boxing a long time, do you think he can add this to... to not to add to his game, Uni. Like, did you watch the Dubois fight? How many times did he get hit there? Yeah, but did he need to move his head as much for that fight? Yeah, but I'm saying he did because Daniel Dubois was throwing, still throwing straight shots. He had to move his, he had to move his head. Zhang was throwing a straight backhand. There's no real difference just from the southpaw stance. Joe underperformed that fight. It's the worst. I've seen Joe spar a thousand rounds. I've seen him box as a professional for five, six years. It's the worst I've ever seen him in my life. Joe needs to. He, he, he lost too much weight. He was too light. I don't think he uh, prepared properly, if I'm perfectly honest. I don't think he did. I think that he wouldn't... Oh, there's there a lot of stick thrown that way, saying, oh, they never had southpaw sparring. He definitely had spar southpaw sparring. I just think the southpaw sparring wasn't good enough. Because if you're sparring somebody like Jalolov and he hits you with a left backhand, you're going to move your head for the fucking second one, aren't you? Because you know how hard he is. You've seen, I've, seen, I've been around Jalolov up and close. You do not want to take too many shots off him. So you need that type of sparring that's going to put the fear of God into you. I think Joe just overlooked him a little bit, was a bit relaxed in his, his, in his approach, um, and I think it's going to be completely different this time. Listen, I don't want to, listen, I 100% I, I, I underestimated Zhang in the, in the first fight. I won't do that again, but I believe if Joe Joyce is at his best, he'll beat Zhang. Does a Tyson Fury... Francis Ngannou fight interest you in any way? No, mate, not one bit. I love Tyson Fury, mate. Love him, love him. Best heavyweight in the world, but I could not give a shit about watching that fight. I just couldn't. It's a mismatch, mate. I don't care about it. I want to see Tyson Fury against Alexander Usyk for Undisputed. Anything less than that from Tyson Fury, I'm not interested. Talking about Alexander Usyk, he's going to be fighting Daniel Dubois. Nothing's yeah. been formally, yeah, actually, it's, weird, it's, weird, it's quite, it? it is a bit weird. But saying that fight's going to happen, they won the pair yeah. anyway, K2 have. Is there any chance uh, that Daniel Dubois, a lot of people talk about his power, that he can upset the odds? Yeah. No, if I'm honest, mate. I don't, I don't believe so. I think, listen, Daniel Dubois carries huge power, but hitting Alexander Usyk clean on the chin with his big, slow right hand is going to be like trying to grab a piece, trying to grab a piece of confetti out the sky. I, I, I don't believe Daniel Dubois is ready for that fight. I don't believe he's mentally ready for that fight. And I think that, um, but, but listen, it's a shot of the world heavyweight title. You can't begrudge him that. And I wish him all the best. Gen genuinely, I wish him all the best. But I believe Usyk will win that fight by stoppage as well. Final one for myself, Anthony Joshua. It looks like him and Wilder are going to be fighting in December. Eddie Hearns actually in London talking to the Saudi reps. Um, a fight that's been touted for August 12th. There's still the Dillian White fight. There's still an offer there. There's still talks going on. Do you feel like that's still the best fight for AJ at this point before you fight someone like Wilder? Is that Dillian White fight? I don't know. I would like, AJ needs a bit of a confidence boost. I'm not saying Dillian White's that, but I, I like the Dillian White fight. But ultimately, AJ, I do think, needs the activity. So whether it's White or whether it's a Caballero or whether it's somebody, he needs to keep his... He needs to... Because the Jermaine Franklin fight, he was a bit underwhelming. I don't think it was as bad as what everyone made out, but I thought it was underwhelming. Um, it'd be good to see him get some, get another good fight. I'd love to see the Dillian White fight because I think it'd be a good build-up. It'd be good fun. I think it'd fill the O2. It'd be a great atmosphere. And then the Deontay Wilder fight. I don't think there's a more exciting fight to be made in world boxing than that fight. So, yeah, that's what I think to that. Sam Jones, always a pleasure to talk to yourself. Um, good luck with everything in the future. I know you've got a lot of fights. You're going to be signing a lot more. Uh, good luck to Jack Cattrall. We'll be looking forward to an yeah. announcement. Uh, with him and uh, yeah we'll speak to you soon Tom and Sam nice Jones cheers